Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Year 9 Curriculum Pathways Evening for East Leak Academy uh, in 2021. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening um, and uh, joining us live on uh, a virtual event, which is the, the first ever virtual Curriculum Pathways Evening. Um, this evening is obviously normally uh, a hustle and bustle of people coming through the school um, and so we're really uh, you know sad to not be able to see you in person this evening but we do hope that uh, the virtual event will give you the information that you need to help inform your choices. Uh, we do also have um, some taster sessions that are running throughout next week's curriculum uh, on Teams, so we would encourage students to engage with those taster sessions in all the different subjects so that they can again gather more information. This evening is about uh, choices, so Pathways is an exciting time for some and a daunting choice for, other, for others um, and life's full of choices um, and some you know, quite small choices with less significant impacts, but some are, are slightly greater. And this is kind of the first point in in a comprehensive education journey for a young person where they really get to have to make some important decisions. And we do know that those decisions are are you know easier for some than others. So we're here to support you through that process. And I've got colleagues on the, the call this evening who are going to talk you through that process and support our young people, uh, our students into making those important decisions. So welcome to parents, welcome to students. Joining me on the call this evening, I have uh, Mr. Berry, the head of year nine, uh, and he's going to talk to you in a second. And I've also got Mr. Jackson, our vice principal, who's uh, kind of uh, responsible for looking at, at kind of choices and outcomes for young people in the school. Um, so Mr. Jackson's going to speak to, to, uh, to, to parents and students later as well. We also have the uh, facility this evening to do some question and answering. So we'll pick up questions and answers later on uh, in the process and hopefully be able to uh, answer a lot of those frequently asked questions. So I hope you enjoy this evening. Uh, welcome to East Lake Academy and uh, I'll hand over to Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Uh, so yes, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the year nine curriculum pathways presentation. Um, students often refer to this as the options process. So this evening, we're going to talk to you about the 14 to 16 curriculum pathway, the process involved and the options subjects available to students. We recognise that this is a really important time. The subjects and qualifications that students choose to study within Key Stage 4 will directly affect how they spend their time during the next two years and the faculties they will work and study within. Could be what sets up their career pathway, the sixth form they choose, college courses and or apprenticeships they might apply for in the future. This is their first chance to decide on the subjects they will study at East Leak Academy and they will be responsible for making their own informed decisions within this process. Now, over the last few weeks, I've had lots and lots of questions from parents, carers and students, which has been fantastic. Now, students often ask the question, how do I make this choice? Well, I think it's important for students to ask themselves three important questions. Firstly, what are they interested in? It could be culture, languages, extended writing pro uh, projects, helping people or designing things. The second, what type of activities do they enjoy? Practical, practical activities, creative work or performing? And finally, what are their interests outside of the academy? And along with that, what skills have they developed in those other interests outside of the academy? Now, as with any important decision, there has to be considerations. There are a range of courses available within certain subject areas. Examples of this can be found within business and sport and vocational options on offer within these pathways. It's important that students select courses which meet their academic and personal interests, skills and abilities. We get lots of questions about vocational courses 
So vocational courses provide practical approaches to learning and offer an alternative learning experience focused on acquiring and applying knowledge, skills and understanding through purposeful tasks. Each course has its own unique assessment methods and this should be considered before final choices are made. Selecting courses which have specific assessment methods could be a useful way to maximise individual progress should they meet the needs, skills, abilities and those experiences of individuals. So I'm now going to hand over to Mr Jackson who's going to talk to you about qualification levels and a bit more of information relating to the options selection. Uh, thank you, Mr. Berry, and good evening, everybody. Uh, so, so nice to see so many of you on the event this evening. Um, just really to echo what Mr. Francis and Mr. Uh, Berry have said, it really is uh, an important process for you to consider that you do have choice. So over the next few years, you're going to start having choices. Uh, in another two years, you'll have choices about what to do at the age of 16. So it's really important to, to be well informed when you make those choices and there's lots of information uh, available taster lessons next week which by the way we would also encourage uh, parents to attend if they can um, and i know mr berry will talk about the website where a lot of information on the year nine section uh, is available for you to have a look at um, i want to just talk about the the levels of qualifications and some of the sort of technical aspects really up until the end of year 11 students study qualifications up to what we call level two uh, so some of the qualifications that we offer also uh, are at level one and you can see there the GCSE grades one, two, three uh, are uh, level one. So they are still a GCSE grade. Also some of the qualifications and if you look in the brochure you will notice that some of them are vocational. Um, they will be called a level one or a level two award. Level two is the higher grade GCSE, so grade four and above. Uh, you'll notice on there it does say A star, A, B, C, D, E, F and G. Well, that refers to the international uh, GCSE, which we don't offer. So that's why those grades are still on there. The GCSEs uh, that we offer are on the, the graded one to nine. So level one and level two are the level of courses. Level three would be studied after the age of 16. So in terms of what options you have, so there is a lot of flexibility, but there's also uh, a core selection of subjects. So you can see on here on the left hand side, uh, part of your core subject package for everybody will be English language and English literature, combined science, which counts for two GCSEs, mathematics uh, and also physical education is part of everybody's timetable in year 10 and 11. Then we move on to the, the five options where you've got uh, a relative amount of flexibility in option one and two, and then a full choice in options three, four and five. So option one and two, uh, you can see at the bottom there, it refers to something called the English Baccalaureate. Now this is uh, a suite of qualifications that if you um, were to choose a combination that included the core subjects, but also uh, humanity, for example, geography and history, uh, a foreign language, a modern foreign language or an ancient foreign language, uh, you would then be, and, and that would be include the two English qualifications, that would be considered to be the e-baccalaureate suite of subjects. Now that, that's a school measure, but the reason it's in there is because it's felt that, that that suite of subjects gives students the widest range of options after the age of 16 uh, and beyond. So that is something just to bear in mind but you'll notice there in option one, we do ask you to choose uh, humanity or a modern foreign language. But in option two, you've got the choice of those subjects, but also computer science and triple science this year is taken as an extra option. But within the other three options, three, four and five, um, you've got an open choice of all of those subjects, plus any of the other subjects that are in the brochure. So it's a pure open choice of any subjects uh, that you that you actually want to study. Uh, we ask you to make five choices and you will study four overall in addition to the core subjects. Now we ask you to choose five. We don't say choose four and a reserve because 
there are certain constraints that we have to operate within. So you do need to make sure that you are comfortable and happy with all of your options. And surely and hopefully through this process, uh, you'll be well informed about those subject choices. So there, just a little bit more information uh, about the English Baccalaureate. So to achieve that, uh, it would be an English, uh, English language and literature, but also modern foreign language, uh, a humanities subject, as well as maths and a science subject. That could include combined science or it could include triple science. That is not something we are asking students to do, but it's something to consider uh, in terms of future options. And you will notice in the brochure, which is available on the website, on the year nine options area, that you have all of the subjects available. Now, in, in the table, you can see a couple of subjects have got an asterisk next to them. And that is because you would choose a business qualification and then you'll be allocated either um, a GCSE subject or a vocational subject in that particular area. So that applies to business. It also applies to sport. So those two subjects are actually um, you, you would choose the subject and that the actual curriculum you would follow would be through uh, a decision and negotiation with that particular faculty. So we want to support students to, to achieve the best results in terms of uh, accessing future uh, future pathways. So we want them to be successful options for you to choose. So that will be part of that guidance if you choose business or you choose sports studies. We will base that on what we know about students from the last three years of studying. So obviously we want to, you to be part of that discussion, but we will make decisions uh, in the best interests of students. And just a couple of pragmatics. Uh, there are two subjects which are mutually exclusive, so that means you cannot take both of them. You cannot choose art and design and three dimensional design because they are actually the same examination code. They're just slight variations of the same course, so you wouldn't be able to take both of those um, at the, both of those subjects. Um, however, you can take any other combination of DT subjects as well as other subjects if you have that interest in those subjects at key stage three. So I will pass back to Mr. Berry, but I will be back a little bit later to answer any questions, hopefully that you uh, you raise. And I look forward to seeing you later. Mr. Berry. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jackson. So you've heard lots of information from myself and colleagues about the options process, but what do current students think about the option, options process? Uh, you're now going to hear the experiences of two current year 10 students, Alistair Howard and Lola Baker. Um, the two students have not so long ago um, completed the options process and or, or almost, uh, almost a year into the key stage four studies. So I'm going to hand over to Alistair, who will then hand over to Lola to talk about their experiences through this process. Um, all right, so I'm a, I'm a current year 10 um, GCSE student and I took French geography, sport and business um, and I took them all for different reasons. Uh, French because I thought it'd be useful to have a language um, when getting a job. Um, and then geography because that was because I quite enjoyed it. Um, and then I took sport as well as business sport because I do quite a lot of sport outside of school um, and I enjoy sport. Um, and then business, I wasn't. Um, because I wasn't so sure, I wasn't so sure about it, but I, I'm OK at maths. Um, so I thought it'd fit well um, with with business. Um, I. I took I took all those subjects and I, I really enjoyed them. I think um, sport, sport and business, probably my uh, most favourite subjects. Um, sport uh, links quite well as well, I think, with the science and backs you up. Um, so yeah, uh, now I'll hand over to Lola Baker. Um, well, I chose similar subjects to Ali, but I think you should just choose what subjects you enjoy and like what you most what you like doing like out of school and stuff like that because then year 10 is more stressful than year nine but it's much easier if you're doing something you enjoy doing 
Um, and then after year 11, I'm thinking of going to sixth form because then I want to go to university afterwards. And then the dream job would be a sports lawyer because I really enjoy doing GCSE sport and I just think it would be a good job to do. So I'm going to hand it back over to Mr Barry now. Now, thank you. Um, so it's one thing, obviously, um, hearing us talk about the options process, but to uh, kind of hear the experiences of students who are, are kind of well into to their key stage four studies, um, it just really adds value to the whole process. So uh, thank you guys for joining us uh, this evening. So we're now going to talk to you a little bit about the pathways process in terms of where we are along the timeline. So you can see from the slide that the process kicked off on the 20th of January with a year nine assembly about the options process, which was delivered to students. Since then, we've had year nine progress reviews issued and we've also had the year nine parent and carer consultation evening. Uh, this morning, students were invited to a assembly during PDL which was an introduction to taster sessions uh, which are coming up week beginning of the 5th of March. You can see um, on the slide there the taster lessons will begin on the 1st of March to the 5th of March and that assembly is still available on Microsoft Teams on the year nine page if um, anybody missed that to go and get some information about that process and how it will work. Um, the final element of the process is for students to make their choices and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that in just a moment. So where can you and where can students go for further information and support? Faculty areas have worked really hard to create promotional options, options subject material. Uh, these are useful for parents, carers and students. These resources provide information information relating to course content, assessment methods, and include details of future study routes and related careers. A parent carer guide to year nine curriculum pathways has also been created to ensure parents and carers are suitably informed to support their child with the options process. We have also developed our year nine pathways brochure to ensure this provides a detailed overview of the pathways process and the subject options available. This includes information about who you should contact for specific subject related information. Now, all of the resources that I've just talked about are available via the eSleep Academy website and the link to access them has been communicated by Weeduck and email in advance of this evening's event. And finally, for further information and support, if you have any questions relating to inclusion or educational needs, including questions around access arrangements, please contact Mr Jones. Mr Jones is the Senko at Eastleaf Academy. His email address is on this slide and this presentation is being recorded for future reference, but his contact details are available on the Eastleaf Academy website. So as I discussed, the final element of the options process, the options form. So this final element will be for students to make their choices. The deadline for this is March the 10th, 2021, and students will need to register their choices using Microsoft Forms. Students will be required to log in with their Academy email account to access the option form and record their choices. This form as well is also available via the Eastleaf Academy website, and the link to access this has been communicated via Weeduck and email in advance of this evening's events. So if you have any further questions, please can you submit using the Q&A window, which now has been made available. Thank you. So what, what uh, should pop be available on your screen is a little chat function on the right hand side. So we will look at some questions and Mrs Daly will feed those through to us and we'll, we'll try and answer as many as we can in the time available. Okay, I think Mr it. Jackson when we've done this in the past uh, there's been a slight delay on the questions coming through so I think we'll... we've had a I think we did have a couple just at the start so I think Miss Day did you have did you have some? I do have one um 
The first one for Mr Barry, I think. Um, so someone's asking, do you have to choose five subjects? Um, yeah, I think Mr Jackson touched upon this earlier. So students would select five and would study four. Um, and I don't like the word reserve. I think you need to prepare to study all of those five. And that's because there's lots going on in the background um, with timetabling. And it just means that you can, you know, study four subjects that you will really enjoy. So yet yeah, you do need to select five. Um, and it's just in case the combination of some of your options don't actually quite fit together. OK, so the next questions are around triple science. There's a few on these. So Mr Jackson and um, the first one, um, someone's put their daughter wants to be a vet. Do they need to study triple science because she really enjoys languages and history as well? Um, I think really if, if um, somebody is set on becoming a vet uh, and that would be the same for medicine, um, dentistry, that sort of thing, then it would be advisable to choose triple science. Um, the uh, that, that, that's not sort of um, devaluing combined science because combined science and triple science, you can achieve grades one to nine on both of those qualifications. Um, so so yes um it would be advisable if that is a certainly a career plan um another sort of question we do get along that is is if i don't do triple science does that mean i cannot then study a level sciences in chemistry physics and biology uh, and the answer to that is well no you don't need to study triple science to then follow a uh, level three uh, science course because you can as i just said you can access the higher grades anyway and actually it's it's far more important to be uh, to achieve a higher grade in science to then move on to a level sciences uh, than to have studied the triple science. But with regard to being uh, a vet or anything that's uh, very specialised in a science area, then we would advise you you take triple science. Um, so the next question: um, Are the choices dependent on the timetable? Do you want me to answer that one, Mr. Jackson? Yeah, OK, yeah, Mr. Francis. Um, so having uh, previously been responsible for timetabling, um, what, what we do is uh, we, we block the subject. So it's not based on the timetable as such. It would be based on the block. So we give a complete free choice to students. Some schools will uh, block the choices before uh, the students make the decisions. So they might, for example, put computer science in a block with um, so normally in a, in a small subject like computer science, we might normally get one group and that might sit in uh, a, a block with another subject, for example, like 3D design. Um, and if that went into the same block and a student had selected to do computer science and 3D design, for example, because that sits in all of those subjects at time table on at exactly the same time in the week, the student wouldn't therefore then be able to do both of those options because they sit within the same block. So what we do is we look at what the students want to do and we'll then put that into a kind of a, a piece of computer software which will rejig it around and it will try and match those combinations as best as possible. Um, and by and large, we'll manage to match most of those choices, but there'll be the odd individual student here or there where some of those choices don't fit for the exact reason that I've just, just kind of talked about. So. Um, it depends and we'll try and match as many choices as possible, but there may need to be some decisions and we come back to students and have conversations to say, well, yes, you've selected this combination of choices, but unfortunately you can't study both of those subjects at the same time because they sit within the same block. So you will know before uh, September when the timetable is kind of published to you exactly what choices you've got. Um, and we will have those conversations with you so that you could reselect options or think about what might be the preference over those different subjects so you could select the ones that you're really wanting to do. So again, try not to worry about that too much at this stage. Select your choices and then we will have conversations with individuals where choices don't necessarily match up and fit. Thank you. Mr. I can see the, sorry. <laughs> Mr Jackson, so if I'm um, choosing business or sport, would the student be informed before the deadline which level they'll be suitable for? Before the 10th of March. Uh, so so, so I guess would... these are the optional vocational and GCSE options. Right, so 
obviously that the 10th of March is only a couple of weeks away. Um, what we would do, because we wouldn't necessarily know what students have chosen until those those choices had come in. So we would start that process once all those uh, choices were in. But if students do and parents do have a question about whether uh, they would be suited to those courses, then please do get in touch on an, on an individual basis and we can have those discussions um, before the deadline or afterwards. But um, ultimately, uh, we're just conscious of time. Uh, the 10th of March being quite close. And so the next question um, is around combinations as well. So um, someone's asking if they choose computer science as part of the EBAC, do they also need to do a language and a humanities subject? Uh, yes, they would. Yes. So what um, the, e the EBAC laureate must have a humanities to, to, to satisfy the qualification, uh, must have uh, a, a a language, either modern, foreign or ancient. We, we offer modern foreign languages uh, and humanities. So yes, they would be required. Uh, one for you, I think, Mr Berry. So a general question here. Um, people are asking, can they submit their options before the 10th of March? Uh, yeah, if students are happy that they are making informed decisions, the options form is now live. They just need to log in using their uh, academy email address and using the same password they log on to Microsoft Teams and submit their choices. What I would suggest is though that is you take the opportunity now to look through the you know, promotional materials and um, that have been made available and experience the taster sessions to make sure that those decisions, you know, you are pretty sure about those because it will only allow you to submit one form at this moment. And for you, Mr Jackson, just another question on triple science and clarification needed, I think here. Does that give you three GCSEs? It does, yes. So, so the way combined science works is you get two GCSEs in combined science, but for triple science, it's a GCSE in physics, a GCSE in chemistry, and a third in uh, biology. So it works out as three GCSEs, yeah. And just on the e back again, can you can you explain the benefit of taking a language and history slash geography again? Yeah, I mean, this this is a government measure and it's it is aimed at giving students the, the biggest breadth of choices of pathways after GCSEs. So it doesn't actually um, give students an extra qualification so they won't get a certificate saying you have an e baccalaureate, but it would be recognised that those suite of qualifications uh, would fit that definition of the baccalaureate. So it's something that the government have got a target uh, to to have a certain percentage of students within secondary education of meeting that uh, criteria. We have gone for more of a flexible choice and, and you probably picked up this evening that we really want students to choose courses that they're interested in, that they enjoy and ultimately will lead on uh, to pathways. So sometimes that that may uh, be subjects that are outside the uh, the English baccalaureate. Uh, but no, the, that's the intention of the government is to just maintain that breadth of options uh, post 16 and beyond. And one for Mr Barry, I think here. So someone is asking, are you likely to get choices one to four or are you just as likely to get your option five over the others? Yeah, so um, it's very difficult to answer at this stage, but the majority of students do do get the you know, the options that they choose. But that's why it's so important that they they pick five that they are prepared to study. Mr. Berry, can I add on that? Add a bit more onto that from. Can I add into onto that as well, yeah. Mr. Berry? That if students put the options down in their preference of choice, it will help us to uh, kind of look at that. But again. Uh, that's really not always possible. So again, I need to echo that the uh, students need to make sure that they are ready to study the full five subjects because they are yeah, likely to, uh, some students will be likely to have to study the fifth option. And that's why we've moved away from calling it, a, a, you know, a reserve. You need to be prepared to study all five that you choose. Thank you for that. There's another question around science here. So someone is asking um, <laughs> what the difference is between combined science, if you could, how, the, how it differs from triple science, if you could make that clear. OK, I'll, I'll pick that one up. So the, the combined science course uh, 
quite a lot of the content that's covered in the combined science course is also covered in the triple science course. Um, so there is additional content um, at a, a slightly um, more in-depth level in the triple subject. So, so the, I don't know the exact percentages, but you've got a big core of uh, the combined science within the triple, and then there's the extra content. So I think there's a couple of two or two or three extra topics per subject, so for biology, chemistry, and physics which would be in addition to what would have been studied uh, by those students studying combined science. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Um, someone's asking about design related subjects. Can you pick three as your open choice options? Uh, technically, yes, yes, you, you can. Um, so uh, Mr. Francis mentioned about obviously timetabling restrictions may come into play if, if in that case, but that is in theory possible. Yes, so you could put if that was uh, your your decision, uh, obviously taking into account the the issue with art and 3D design. So just making sure those aren't uh, put down as options. Do do remember, Mr. Jackson, if they put those three choices in the in the open choice blocks for three design subjects, they would only be allocated uh, at, at two of those subjects because they would uh, they would need to pick up the the other subject from the 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 choice the block one uh, and two, which would come into play. So they wouldn't be able to study all three of those design options. Yeah, so sorry, they would, so. so. Yeah, sorry. So you'd 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 have to pick up your option one and option two, which is a non uh, ADT, and you'd get two of the three uh, if the if the remaining were ADT subjects. Yeah. And Mr. Jackson, one parent's asking. Although you mentioned there's no reserve, should my child put them in order of preference, i.e., five is the least favourable? Well, I suppose repeating what Mr. Francis there uh, said there, then that that would give us uh, an indication. But it's it's being it's being prepared and not just putting that fifth choice as something that you just really don't want to study. It's really being prepared uh, uh, to study that subject, and we, and we would have those discussions if that was required. Okay, uh, Mr. Berry, there's one here from someone asking if BTEX can be done in parallel. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. The well, in terms of so if there are BTEC subjects as well as other we do have WJEC vocational subjects, they're done as their own options. So what we don't run is uh, option three would not be a GCSE and a BTEC. Right, you, would, you would have option three would might be a GCSE course, option four and five might be two BTEC courses. So um, but bear in mind with business and with sport, that would be um, putting down a choice that would be in those subject areas and then the the level of or the um, the nature of those courses so whether BTEC or GCSE uh, would then be confirmed. Thank you Ms Jackson. Um, a question here is that what what happens if um, a student doesn't want to do a language or humanity do they have to they do have to do those as core subjects is that correct? Um, well, so obviously in option one, I don't know if we can go back to that slide. Option one was the humanity and the language. Within the option two, you have the humanities and the geography, but also computer science and triple science. Uh, so that, that is the flexibility we put in there, but it must be a subject out of that list, from that list for option one and option two. Uh, so as a bare minimum, they would have to do a, a humanity or a language. Uh, but if they were going to do either or, it would then result in having to do computer science or triple science. So, uh, so yeah, really are constrained by those choices in option one and option two, where option three, four, five are fully open. And the next question, um, is there a difference between a GCSE and a vocational award? So is there a disadvantage in taking a vocational course? No, um, really the 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 way to think about this, it's it's uh, the courses have a different style of assessment. Uh, some students prefer to have uh, the exam at the end 
some students prefer to have a combination of uh, maybe more portfolio type coursework, uh, but there's no disadvantage in terms of uh, their value, uh, the, the levels. So, for example, you can get a distinction star in vocational subjects, uh, which is the equivalent of the higher end of uh, GCSE grade. So, no, I wouldn't. I, we do not. We say they've got parity in terms of uh, qualification, whether it's vocational level one or level two or GCSE level one or level two, they should be viewed as equivalent qualifications with different, slightly different assessment um, styles. And Mr. Berry, a few people have just been asking if you could just reiterate where the options form can be found. Yeah, um, so um, yesterday a link was sent out by WeDoc an email uh, and it had this, the link to um, this evening's event. Um, at the bottom of that page, uh, there's a summary of, uh, at the bottom of that message, there's a summary of the resources available and uh, detail within that is the link to the Academy website. But if you did go to a well-known search engine and type in East Leak Academy on the news and current events, um, it does take you to the year nine options page. Mrs. Daly, can I come in on a question that I'd seen a bit further up on the on the questions? Of course. Um, so one question was, uh, do, do students need to buy any uh, expensive equipment for um, things like photography, et cetera? Um, and no, the answer is absolutely no. We, we will provide all of the equipment for um, the, different, uh, the different subjects and the different options. And that's something that we're really keen to promote because I have known students in the past who've kind of, when I've, when I've done some digging into the options that they chose and, and they kind of say, oh, I really wanted to do that option, but I didn't choose it. And I kind of explored why they were kind of thinking about financial pressures on parents, uh, etc., around kind of things like uh, catering, for example, and food and buying ingredients. And so really, really, uh, if you're a student listening this evening or a parent who's kind of worried about any financial uh, constraints to doing a subject, please don't feel that, that you can't come to the school and talk to us about the, you know, how you how you can be supported in that. We will support absolutely every student to do and to take to follow their passions and the subjects that they want to do. And we know that there's been a lot of impacts at the moment with the current situation with with coronavirus and families, um, you know, having some difficult times. So please do come and have a conversation with us um, and don't feel, feel that you can't do that because we want to support students to follow their passions uh, and not feel that they have to, to be denied a subject because of any kind of worries or concerns like that. Thanks, Mr. Francis. I think the final question um, here is just to confirm for some of the students. So one is, do you do five GCSEs or four only? And someone is also asking, how many free choices will they be able to take? If you could just reiterate, sort of confirm those questions again for them. OK, so I'll come in here. So the slide is obviously still on the screen. Um, so combined science would be two. English would be two GCSEs and maths would be uh, one. So that would be five within there. And then within the options, there would be uh, another four. So it would be nine nine of GCSE or equivalents level level one or level two qualifications uh, would be nine. Uh, some students uh, who've been in consultation uh, with we've been in consultation with parents and students uh, already. Uh, some of them have got a slightly adapted timetable, but for the vast majority of students, you would be taking the nine GCSE or equivalent qualifications. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Berry, just one final one that, or a couple of final ones that just come in. So if you want to specifically study retail business, how do you know you're going to get onto the course? Are there any, are there any measures that you yeah, so use? Yeah, um, so um, students will select the pathway. And then I think as Mr. Jackson said earlier, um, we will look at um, discussing um, the available options within that pathway. Um, with students, parents and make decisions where students are placed at, at the centre really to make sure that they are on the courses which best meet their their kind of needs, their skills, their abilities and, and also going back to that consideration slide it was about making sure that those assessment methods within those different types of course whether it be the GCSE or vocational really kind of you know and nurture those current skills and abilities to get the best out of students and ultimately so they enjoy the course that they're on. 
Um, there are a few more questions. I don't know if you want to keep going um, with regards to time or if you'd like to send an FAQ sheet out to parents. Just one yes. I'd like to pick oh, up. Sorry, on. Sorry. Um, so just just getting a flavour through some of those questions there, I think is still perhaps a misconception on this uh, part of the form here. So in those first options choices on option one and option two, you've got those those lists of subjects and you have to select those sub or one of those subjects in each of those option kind of choices where they sit. But if you wanted, for example, to pick French in the first block, and history in the second block. You could then choose geography or computer science as one of your option three and four. So those subjects are also available to choose in option three, four and five. So if you'd selected German in the first choice and then you'd selected history, you could then put geography and computer science into the next two blocks. So those th three, four and five are completely open to every single subject, including the subjects that also sit within option one and option two. Does that make sense? OK, I think to wrap up the Q&A session then, so just a final one, if someone wanted to do 10 GCSEs, would that be possible if, if the if the child was had the ability? Um, well, it, it's the it's the whole balance between quantity and I suppose um, really the thing to think about is pathways and and what what is to be achieved and, and what the purpose is going through to post sixteen whether it's courses at A level whether it's a um, more vocational pathway um, so we we've gone for this model where where it's nine GCSEs um, and it, and it is sort of the way we we plan the curriculum um, we have had some students who've taken extra GCSEs, for example, in Spanish, where they've, they've, they've been fluent in that, um, where they've, they've got a home language, for example, as well. Um, but we do, we, we can talk about that, but we are constrained uh, by obviously by the timetable, because if we have that 10th GCSE, the teaching time has to be given and it, we can't just tag it on to the end of the day or onto the end of the week, which is why we've got this, um, why we've got this uh, structure in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I think that concludes most of the Q&A session. Now. Can, can I just mention about next week? Um, I know it's not a question we've had on the uh, on the Q&A, but the the way that the taster lessons will be set up is that the students you will all see on your calendar from Monday where you'd normally have a period one lesson. You may have a taster lesson. I know that most days have got three or four taster sessions. Uh, so um, so you need to access that your normal lesson that the, the lesson shouldn't be on your calendar. Uh, but if it is, just go into the taster lesson because the normal lesson won't be running. So uh, so we do really encourage students to uh, to engage with those next week. Um, parents as well, if you're available, because that will really give you a flavour and maybe there'll be questions you've got that are more subject specific that you can ask uh, in those sessions. So uh, I would really encourage everybody uh, to, to engage in those next week. A lot of work has gone into putting those together uh, and they're really informative sessions. Also on the website, uh, a lot of information, uh, videos uh, on that web page as well on the on the YouTube channel. So please do take the time to have a look at that uh, as well. But any questions, please do get in touch. Yeah, if your question this evening has not been answered, uh, please don't worry because um, I'm mindful that we can't necessarily answer every single question that comes in. Um, but we do want to get back to you. So what we will do is we'll create a frequently asked questions document um, and we'll put that together and we'll make that available and communicate that with you. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us uh, this evening. Thank you.